So I had a little bit of a back and forth with Lauren Southern, uh, somebody that I've been friendly with for a long time. This isn't a feud. This isn't like calling out Lauren Southern. She's going to come on a live stream. We're going to talk about it more in depth. But obviously it dominated my uh, X feed today. And so a lot of people are asking questions or conversating and taking part in the conversation. One of the, thing that I, one of the things that I worry about greatly for the future of essentially humanity is apathy and the intersection point, intersectional point right now between men going their own way, men choosing to leave or, or self-select out of the dating pool, and the rapid rise of products that will make it extremely easy for them to do that. So my point essential, essentially is that AI girlfriends, robotics, these little banana washers that guys are using, is making it a lot easier to opt out of the dating pool. And they are incentivized to opt out of the dating pool because there's no risk to this kind of thing. And I talk... I talked a little bit about that and it was met with some con con some right-ish commentators with mocking, essentially. Lauren Southern, I think, um, um, actual justice warrior, nuance bro. Um, again, I'm not feuding with any of these people, but they were all essentially saying, bro, uh, no real men are actually choosing to have AI girlfriends over IRL women. And that's just simply not true. And so they kept saying, give me an example. So I'd give them an example. Well, give me another example. So I'd give them another example. So give me another example. So I would say, why don't you look at the entire nation of Japan? Okay. The birth rates in America are plummeting. And I am part of the kind of terminally online world. I know what men are talking about because I see them in my chats. I see them in the comment section. I see them on Twitter. And this isn't just one or two men. And we already have entire movements essentially around men going their own way, men opting out of the dating pool. I'm not talking about like cringe pill woman haters. I'm talking about men who are just legitimately not interested anymore. They, they see you know, the dating scene, they see the way that online dating has already has accelerated a system that already works against them, right? 20 to 15 to 20% of the men are hooking up 50 to 60% of the time. Those are real numbers. 50 to 60, they're having 50 to 60% of the actual relationships, sex, that is. And so men see that and they're like, why would I even bother? And I'm talking about that as an alarmist. I'm worried about it. I'm not dunk using it to dunk on women. I'm just saying women should take notice of that. That's all I'm saying is that there are a lot of good men who have been either sucked in by parasocial relationships um, with OnlyFans. By the way, 90% of people recently surveyed uh, that use and pay for OnlyFans are married, just so you know that. So it's not single people that are funding OnlyFans. That's a common misconception. I have the data right here. This is from Tech Report. Most surprisingly, almost 90% of the OnlyFans users in this survey were married. Okay, that doesn't mean no single people use it. That just means that <laughs> of this survey, of everyone's survey, 90% of them were married. A lot of married men using OnlyFans. It's not the single guys. And when you look at the conversation, people say, no, no women are actually doing that. No women are. That's wrong. They absolutely are. Or no men are. They absolutely are. Lauren Southern says, no man is choosing an AI girlfriend over a real girlfriend. Zero. There are a small minority of guys pretending they're choosing AI girlfriends over real ones because they are incapable of formulating the latter. It's the most obvious nuclear level cope. Lauren Southern is just 100% wrong about this. She just is wrong. She's a good looking woman who's never had a problem getting dates. Okay. That isn't meant 
to be a put down. That's meant to talk about a reality. Okay. She has no idea what it's like to go years without a date. No idea what it's like to be re rejected. It's like uh, this wild blind spot that pretty people have. You know, pretty people, confident people. You know, um, and I'm not like a lot of people say, "Oh, a single mom." Ha! Huh? I'm not even. Ta I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go down that road with her. I think that that's an unfair criticism. I don't think you know single mom should be offering marriage advice, but. You know, in general, that's like me, a fat man, giving food advice or, you know, it's just not, you know, you might have good advice, but it's best to just not go down that road. So I replied that in an article today, an article printed today, 30,000 paid ads on Facebook for AI girlfriends, 30,000 different ads on, on Meta and Instagram advertising AI girlfriends. They're paying for that. So what is the women's response to this? Oh, well, it's prawn addiction. You're, you know, oh, the, they're all prawn addicts. You're wildly over-evaluating that. It's wrong. She's just wrong. She doesn't talk to men who, she just doesn't interact. It's like such an incredible blind spot. Um, like, oh, I'm a pretty girl. I have no, you know, obviously who has a problem getting a date? I'm a pretty girl who's an influencer. Um, God, what kind of losers have problems getting dates? You see Batcher Joker saying here, Lauren, you have no idea about the statistics and realities for young men. Double the young men are single compared to young women. Who are the women dating? One, older established men and sharing the exact same top percentage of men. This is true. Essentially, the Chads and the Stacys are just banging each other at a higher rate than ever because of dating apps. A recent Pew research suggests that a tectonic shift in the dating and bedroom life of men. The study found that among men under 30, over 60% of them are single, almost double that of what women are in the same age bracket. Not only are more young men single, but their opportunities for developing a relational and bedroom repertoire, repertoire is all but vanished as levels of intimacy across genders appear to have hit a 30-year low. Go on a dating site. Look at the number of men versus women, okay? The fact that people are, are, are like, huh, it must just be incels kind of thing is so insane. Like, you're just not plugged in to, to men at all. And I've plugged into a lot of men. You know what I mean? I, you know, 95% of my viewership is men. I know. I read the comments from 10,000 men every day. I see them on Twitter. I see them on Rumble. I see them on YouTube. Is it just AI? No. The, the real reason these numbers are down is because men have a problem with prawn. They do. He lost, he, they have a problem with prawn. Women, particularly ones like in, you know, the 20s, the 30s, grew up on third wave feminism and were told that body count is something cool. Men don't want to marry whores. By the way, women don't either. I suspect if a woman, if a woman was dating a guy and he had a, you know, body count of, you know, 200 women, I don't think she'd be like, wow, he'd be a great baby daddy. She'll hook up with him though. If you look at the, the dating app math, it's so correct. Where women, men will move two to three rungs down on their, on their scale for a woman. Like a seven man will, will sleep with a five woman. He's not marrying her. So that five woman is getting pounded purple by all these seven and eights on dating apps because hookups are very different than marriage material. That man eventually wants to settle down and guess what he's looking for? Not some chick who's been, you know, uh, rode hard and put away wet on dating apps. He's looking for someone who's a trad wife with a low body count. That's what that. And so all these women submit themselves to this lifestyle. The chads don't marry them. And then the guys who have been waiting around patiently in the five, six, seven, you know, rating 
you know, four, five, six, seven. They don't want some used up, you know, blown out uh, woman. They don't want that. So what do you have? You have a massive stalemate where the top 20% of men and women are still thriving as they always have. It's really not hard to get laid when you're hot. Okay. That's not that difficult to understand. But when you're talking about the difference between hookups and marriage, men see these women getting you know blasted every weekend by a different guy. They're not interested in marrying you. And so only so many times can you go on these dating apps, dating apps and be like, wow, I was like throwing, you know, she, she's, she's, you know, oh, a single mom. Oh, here's another single mom. Oh, here's another single mom. Or here's another single mom. Or, oh, she's got 500 uh, dudes following her on Instagram or wh- whatever the case is, you know. Um, She might be able to suck a golf ball through a garden hose, but you're not marrying her. So eventually men are just like, I'm out. You know, they opt out. Well, just because they opt out of dating does not mean they have lost their will to want to have human connection. Just because they logged off the dating apps and they've decided that it's just too much work doesn't mean that they don't have their own physical urges. And at some point, Throughout history, you didn't have a million options to to get that, but the mind is powerful, and that there are plenty of good men. the The implication from a lot of these women and some of these men are that oh, it's just incels that are doing that. That's not right. That's not true. That's not correct. There are absolutely good individuals who decide to opt out of the dating pool, and. You know, the way it's being framed, like, oh, you know, oh, they're just incels. Ha, 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 ha. Like, no, they're not. They're just people that are like, you know what? Yeah, it would be great if uh, I had a wife. But you know what? Between augmented reality and um, those automatic banana washers and, you know, we're like two years away from incredibly convincing sex bots. There will be a significant shift, a seismic shift of more men making it more exciting and tantalizing to opt out of the dating pool. You have Courtney Kershaw. Again, no disrespect to her. But when I say that there's 30,000 paid ads for AI girlfriends on Facebook in one day, her response is, you've heard of incels? Wrong. Men want companionship. Men have wanted just because things around the world haven't changed, you know, have changed, it doesn't change that men seek companionship just like women. And these people wouldn't be running ads um, if people weren't buying their product. It's not a charity, it's a business. And so my real concern is that the more difficulty there is in the dating pool, the more reasons there are to not partake in dating women. Real or perceived, by the way, because perception is reality. We're headed towards very, very bad times. Look at Japan's birth rates right now. They are desperate to get people to marry. You think some guy wants to date some girl who's had 50 partners? No. You think some girl really wants to marry some guy who's got 50 to 100 partners. No, they don't. People have their animal urges. They hook up and hook up, and then they become unmarriable. And quite frankly, men seem to have the propensity, the openness, to be willing to accept these waifus, these AI girlfriends, these AI chatbots. It's real. Whether or not Lauren Southern, you know, a pretty girl, can see that, or not is irrelevant. I'm correct. There are people that spend ten, twenty thousand dollars a month pay for paid AI girlfriend services. S- single men. I showed that example, and then of course their response was, "Yeah, but show me another one. But show me another one. But show me another one. Oh, that guy must be a loser. Yeah, a loser can afford ten thousand dollars a month for AI girlfriend. I'd like to be that loser." This is an article that came out today. It's only a matter of time before someone builds the next billion dollar dating app that will pair real life users with AI created girlfriends. Of course, 
Greg Eisenberg, CEO of Late Checkout, wrote a blog post on X where he shared that he had met a man in Miami who admitted to him that he spends $10,000 a month on AI girlfriends. I thought he was kidding, but he's a 24-year-old single guy who loves it. He's 24, single, and can afford to piss away 10 grand a month on AI girlfriends. Sounds like he's an ultra high earner and he's completely checked out. Totally, you know, okay, that you want to discredit that guy, fine. Okay. You want to discredit this case, that case, this case, that case. They're not going away. It's time that men and women, you know, shape up, quite frankly. Um, third wave feminism ruined women. And Basically, 20 years of getting told they're garbage, uh, you know, with things like toxic masculinity, this, that, and the other thing, has made men not want to do it. And that's sad. I'm not saying, ha, 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 get wrecked, women. I'm saying, damn, society is headed towards a dark place. People talk about control, live in the pod, eat the bugs. Well, it turns out the pod... Could just be your very own AI girlfriend. Never leave the house. Takes care of your physical needs. Live in the pod. It's just a sex pod, apparently. 